All right, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The Blessed Bananas. Written by Tayyaba Sayyid and illustrated by Milani Putri. I really like the cover art. On top of the highest hill, above a giant banana plant, there lived a cranky old monkey named Rico. He was the wealthiest of all, for Allah, the Most High, had truly best blessed Rico with the banana plant he called home. It bore sweet, tasty bananas all year round, so Rico never had to search for food. He refused to share his bananas with anyone, and he never thanked Allah for all his blessings. Rico thought he deserved all the bananas, since he had planted and grown this plant all by himself. No, he hadn't. I like that reaction. Everyone went, <gasps> stop. No, he hadn't. He hadn't, right? Allah had to help it grow. Right? See, that's smart thinking. MashaAllah, we have some smart boys in our group. Everyone in the village below knew not to come near Rico or the hill. That was his home, and those were his bananas. Every day he sat alone atop his banana plant, eating bananas and tossing the peels down below, That's not littering. caring about the mess. That's littering. That is littering. The monkey had everything he needed, Great food, a perfect home with the best view. In California, do we have good views? Yes. Yes, alhamdulillah. And a beautiful surrounding breeze. Yet Rico felt like something was still missing. So every day, Rico would count his bananas to make sure they were all there. 305, 306, 307? That's a lot of bananas. As the monkey continued counting, he heard a tiny, squeaky voice from below. Excuse me, sir. May the peace of Allah be upon you, the little voice called out. Immediately, Rico looked around the area to see who would dare come near him and his bananas. Who's there, he asked, not seeing anyone in sight. Down here, spoke a little white mouse. Rico glared at his feet. Eek, he shrieked. How dare you come here, questioned Rico. This is my home, and you are not allowed up here. Now, shoo. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. My name is Chico. I'm new to this area and was searching for some lunch. I made dua to Allah to help me find food, and then I saw your yummy bananas. M may I have just one banana, pretty please? He asked politely. Listen, mouse, leave my home right this minute or you will be sorry. Everyone knows no one is allowed up here and I don't share my bananas with anyone. He's a big fat bully. I heard except for himself and he is a bully. He sounds like a bully. Let's see. I, 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 I don't know anyone here and I didn't know about your rules, sir, Chico explained softly. I won't disturb you again. Chico was so sad that his eyes began to well up with tears. He wondered how someone could be so selfish and mean. Out of respect for the elder monkey, though, Chico did not say another word. 
and sadly scurried back down. Ya Allah, please guide that monkey to goodness. And with that prayer, Chico went quickly down the hill. Rico's heart was now racing with anger. That was the first time in a long time anyone had come to and talked to him. He was not happy about it. He then realized the unwanted meeting with the mouse had made him forget his count. Great. Now I must start all over again, he said out loud. I remember You do? Yeah, because You have a good memory. I didn't remember that, and I read it. <laughs> Mashallah. As Rico began counting again, a black and yellow toucan flew down behind and rested on the opposite side of the banana plant. She was panting very hard. Oh, oh, assalamu alaikum, she said between breaths. I'm Tukana. May I rest here for a few minutes? Rico could feel his blood boiling, and he quickly turned around to see who dares to come onto his property now. He walked up close to Tukana. He stared at her hard. He then leaned in close to his, her face and shouted, no. Tukana fluttered her wings in disbelief and backed away from him. That sounded really mean. I didn't mean to upset you. I had been flying for a long time and just needed a break. I saw your lovely home and didn't think you'd mind. I'll just be going, sorry, Tukana said kindly. Tired and hurt, she flew away, making a quick dua. Oh Allah, I forgive that monkey. Oh Allah, please have your mercy on him too. Rico had had enough and decided to put up signs to keep strangers off his property. And the signs definitely worked. Days went by and no one came by Rico or his home. Rico ate and ate his bananas until his tummy hurt. Yet, he wasn't satisfied. Something's still missing, he said to himself. Who can see what his signs say? No, no, no people. No, no, no bananas. Banana. For you. For you, good. Stay off, no bananas for you, go away. Stay off and go away. No bananas for you. He used the number four. It's slang. It's like slang. Yes. yes. One afternoon, Rico finally climbed down his tree to check up on his signs when a large gray elephant approached him. Assalamu alaikum, brother. My name is Simone. He greeted warmly in a deep voice. Rico turned and glared up in shock at the giant creature. I am not your brother, Rico replied curtly. What do you mean? No one is allowed to come near me or my home. Don't you see my signs here? Now Simone was in dire need of the monkey's help and decided to ignore his rudeness. He reached out his trunk and softly nudged Rico on the shoulder. You are my brother in Islam, he reminded Rico. I need your help to find my herd. I see you live on this tall banana tree on this high hill, and I was hoping you could look from above to see which way my herd went, said Simone. I should practice my deep voice. Rico had heard enough. Get off my property right this minute. You can find your own way back. The word spit out of Rico's mouth. He turned his back towards the elephant and started to climb back up his plant. Brother, I beg you, Simone pleaded. Just take a minute to look for my herd and I'll be on my way. Please, brother, please. Rico ignored him and just kept climbing. In desperation, Simone began to pace back and forth he didn't notice all of the banana peels below and under his huge feet. Suddenly, he started to slip and he quickly grabbed onto the plant's large stem with his trunk. 
Whoa! Simone screamed, shaking the plant as he tried to get back on his feet. Shaking the plant. Whoa! Uh-oh. Who's up in the tree? Startled and scared, Rico held on from above with both hands. Bananas came crashing down, just missing Simone's head, causing him to lose his balance and to shake the plant even harder. Rico watched with shock as one by one, the bananas rained downward. My bananas, said Rico, help, someone help. However, no one came to his rescue. He then looked up to the heavens and he prayed as hard as he could, Ya Allah, help me as you are the only one that can save me now. In his deepest time, who did he reach out to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means there's goodness in his heart. At the foot of the hill, Chico and Tukana, Tukana happened to be resting by a water hole. They both worried, worriedly looked up towards the hill when they heard all of the chaos. Do you hear that? asked Chico. Someone's in trouble up there. Let me fly up and check, said Tukana. She quickly flew upwards to get a better view and saw the old monkey desperately hanging on to his banana plant with panic in his eyes. It's the old monkey, Tukana shouted down to Chico. He looks like he's about to fall. Oh no, we have to help him, cried Chico. Tukana swooped down and dra grabbed Chico into her long beak. She then flew up again as fast as she could through the shower and bananas and leaves. They reached Rico in no time. But she couldn't talk with Chico in her mouth. Rico immediately recognized Tucana and was relieved to see her this time. Please help, begged Rico. The elephant is knocking down all my precious bananas. Chico peeked out from inside Tucana's uh, beak. Ya Allah, please help, he prayed silently. He then told Tucana to fly down close to the elephant's ear. Despite Simone's magnificent size, Chico knew just what to do. So Chico's the mouse in Tucana, the bird's beak. And she's telling him, fly down, fly down to the elephant. She said, fly down. When she flew down close to Simone, Salawat al Nabi, he shouted into Simone's enormous ear. Simone didn't know where the order came from, but he quickly let go of the plant and found his footing again. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, he recited with a loud exhale. Oh, then all became calm. He looked up and saw Tukana hovering above his head with a mouse in his beak. Uh, peace, he greeted them. Salam. Rico slowly climbed down to the others. He started to cry at the sight of all the fallen mushy bananas. Why did you knock down this monkey's bananas? Chico questioned Simone. I didn't mean to do that. I got separated from my herd and I kindly asked this monkey to search from above, but he refused. I then slipped on his banana peels and lost my balance. Simone explained as he gasped for breath. Oh, I'm sorry about all your bananas. He apologized to Rico. Still, he made a mistake, so he apologized. Chico, Tucana, and Simone all stared at Rico. No one knew how he would respond. The monkey sat on the ground and placed his fa face in his hands. <sighs> he realized it was his own carelessness and selfishness that caused all his bananas to fall. He felt bad about how he had treated the others, and yet 
they still came to his help and rescued him. After a few minutes of silence, he stood up again. It's not your fault, Rico said, finally spoke. I should be the one to apologize. All these years of being alone here have made me selfish and ungrateful. You each did not ask me for much. I should have helped you all. Please forgive me. Tucana let Chico climb out of her beak. It's okay, she said. We already forgave you so that Allah can forgive us one day. Rico finally let out a radiant smile. Please come up and take rest in my home, he welcomed Tucana. He then picked up a large bunch of bananas and placed them next to Chico. Please help yourself, he told the little mouse. They all look happy now. Then he climbed to the top of his home and he scanned the village below. He pointed north and said, there, I see your herd that way. Simone looked up at Rico, happily thanked him, and then went down the hill heading north. Could have. I'm glad he didn't though, because then Simone would have been really lost. Then Rico shouted uh, from atop his trees, Oh, my fellow villagers, please come and help yourself to these bananas. What's mine is yours. Villagers came running up the hill from all corners, gathering up as many bananas as they could. They made breads, shakes, puddings, and all types of goodies with the fruit. The more Rico gave away, the more bananas his plant bore. So when he gave it away, did all his bananas leave? Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Allah, for everything. Rico cried out in happiness as he was no longer counting bananas. And he was finally feeling satisfied. Nothing was missing anymore. He now enjoyed his blessed bananas atop his home with his new friends, Tucana and Chico. And the best part was that the bananas tasted sweeter than ever. The end. I think mice can climb. We should look up later if mice can climb trees. Otherwise, Tucana might have helped. What did you guys think of that book? Recipes. I know, and there's two really nice recipes at the end for banana bread, a banana date shake, and banana pudding. <coughs> what did you guys think of that book? Did you like it? What do you think we learned from the book? To share, good. To not be greedy. Okay, we gotta listen. Can you say that one more time? Oh, yes, that Chico felt like something was missing and that Chico needed friends. That's nice. Chico, Rico. Rico, you're right. Rico, Rico needed friends. Chico was the mouse. It reminded me of a Pokemon called Trico. It reminded you of a Pokemon named Trico. I've never heard of that one. Did we think, did we learn anything else from this? Don't be greedy and selfish. Don't be greedy and selfish is a good one. Be nice. Being nice and kind to others. Being kind. That's a good one. That was a very good one, yes. What about, what happened when he gave away all his bananas? In the beginning, he saved them because he wanted to save them all for himself, right? But then what happened when he, when he gave them away? We're gonna, I'm going to pick on people who have their hands raised. The more he gave away, and being respectful, good. The more he gave away, and the more Allah blessed him with more bananas, right? So what does that tell us? 
If, we, if, if we're giving it away, but we're getting more, what does that tell us? He just take it out. Yeah? Yeah. Who, who's the one who provides for us? Is it just our hard work? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we give to others, is that really taking away from us? Or do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give us more back? Good, mashallah.